today we're going to talk about 10 completely free must have mac os apps and one paid app there's also a few bonus apps in there my name is nahashon and let's jump straight into it The first application that I'm going to talk about is Spotify. I have done an in-depth review of Spotify and how you can use it even in regions which are not supported in Kenya right here. So you can check my previous video on that explanation. But basically Spotify is a free version of Apple Music. There is free options which you can use and it's very extensive if you look at the database of music that is available. One advantage of Spotify is how it works in almost any devices therefore you can transfer your playlist or you can continue listening from one device to another that is something that you can do with apple music number two display menu when you have a fresh install of mac os or rather if it's a new macbook you will notice that the default resolution is 1440 by 900 and there's no way to change the different resolutions so i use display menu so that i can be able to use it at 2048 by 1280 you can go as high as 2880 by 1800 or even as low as 800 by 600. If you're using an application or a tool like a video editing tool, this means you can see more real estate compared to when you're just using the default 1440 by 900. Moving on, number three, Tinker Tools. I use Tinker Tools for only one thing and that is if you look at this dog down here, you can see there's a space between let's say the Spotify and Final Cut Pro app. There's also a space between Photoshop and System Preferences. So I use Tinker Tool to at least be able to clean up this dock. Tinker Tools is also free and for me I use it for creating those spaces. You can select one or half. You can use it also for doing other things like disabling animation in the launchpad or you can go to general and see several other options. In Apple Music, you can activate allow ratings with half stars. Personally, I just use it for creating these spaces down here because I don't like how everything looks cramped up if you don't have that. Number four is DaVinci Resolve. If you're a beginner video editor or you want to get started with video editing and iMovie is too basic, you can download DaVinci Resolve. DaVinci Resolve is a completely free tool. There's a paid version, but if you're a beginner to intermediate, you really don't need the paid version. You can just start with this. When you exhaust it and you want to pay for it, you will know when you reach that point. But if you don't want to pay for the subscription that comes with Premiere Pro, or you don't have the money to pay for Final Cut Pro, you can use DaVinci Resolve, which is very advanced, and you can do pretty much everything that you will think of. It is also very popular for color grading, and used a lot with calories. The interface might be a little intimidating, but once you get used to it, it's a breeze to use and it's also very fast when it comes to rendering videos. Tool number five is Thunderbird. I use Thunderbird for my custom emails, that is emails that are linked to my domains. Another alternative you can use is Spark. So if you have several emails that you use, you can use the mail tool, that is for select emails, then you can use Spark for other emails and then you can use Thunderbird Again, for other emails, Thunderbird is completely free and it's famous because it's maintained by Mozilla. Tool number six is called Aku. And Aku does only one thing and it does it very well. And that is, it tells you what battery percentage is remaining for your connected devices. For example, in my computer, I've connected my headphones and I am able to see what battery percentage is remaining. This is something that should be default but unfortunately it isn't in macOS. So Aku is going to help you be able to know what battery is remaining. Number seven is called QView. And I'm going to also refer another application called Pure in this case. The advantage of Pure is when viewing photos, it can also view raw file photos, unlike QView. But QView is very fast for previewing photos. Again, this is just because I don't like the default preview app that comes with macOS. Because with the preview app, when I open a picture, I'm not able to use the directions to go forward or backwards. But with QView, I'm able to just open this one image and then I can be able to use my keyboard directions to move forward or backwards. Again, as, as I mentioned, QView doesn't support raw file photos. That's why I, in this case, I have fewer. 
and with fewer once you select one image it's going to ask you to select the entire folder then once that loads you'll be able to move forward or backwards and this is viewing raw photos and it can also view video so this is a very handy tool which i'd advise you to download and use instead of using the default preview app number eight is free download manager and this is one tool that i use also in windows and what it does is it helps you download things from browsers or even you can download torrents using free download manager another thing you can do is you can download youtube videos you just paste the url of a youtube video or any other video and you'll be able to download it another feature is you can also use it to download an entire playlist in youtube so just paste the link here click ok and it's going to take a few minutes to populate all the music and then it will just start downloading it this is a completely free tool and it's open source number nine is vivaldi which is also my favorite browser of choice i used to use opera but i stopped then i decided to use vivaldi and i've been using it ever since for more than two years now and one big advantage of vivaldi is for example i'm looking at this website which is Textport, and let's say i want to check out my let's say my internet speed so i can create these web panels here of different things you can also use it to add a web panel of let's say youtube so you can use youtube on one tab and then also just read your news or take notes or whatever it is you want to do on a different screen so this is like a multitasking paradise if you love multitasking it has a handy screenshot tool down here you can also see the clock here and it also has a notes app which you can just click here and you'll be able to add a new note or even take screenshots again from this place so vivaldi has so many features which you can just go, go around messing around with it and once you start using it you will be stuck to it number 10 again for music the application that i use is called clementine or is it clementine and this is a straightforward music app which supports online playlists and it also supports things like spotify it also supports uh, listening to music straight from your cloud services like let's say amazon cloud drive box google drive whatever music you want to listen to double click and that's it it plays the one paid app that i'm going to mention here is called pop notes and what pop notes does is it's a note taking app that is stuck here on your taskbar you can write whatever it is that you want to do then when you click it disappears it also syncs to your iCloud drive meaning you can retrieve other notes that you've written before another handy feature of it is let's say you're using your browser you can just click on the notes and then pin it here so you can be browsing maybe doing whatever it is you're doing and you want to take notes so you can easily multitask between these two i'm also going to quickly mention some other completely free apps which you can use and one of them is called trello i have the desktop app here which you can see i've written all the notes for this video it's also very handy and it syncs in the cloud and you can download the android app and use it in a browser and pretty much everywhere else another famous tool that is popular is called handbrake and this one you can use it to decode videos or is it encoding a video let's say you have a 20 gb video which you want to compress it handbrake is going to compress that video from any format to any other format another tool that you might need during this time of the covid 19 crisis let's say you work from home is the Arian webcam for mac and this application supports android and also iphones so instead of using the default webcam you can at least upgrade your video quality by connecting your android phone and using it as a webcam another very popular tool is called audacity and audacity is an audio editing tool with this you can use it to create podcasts you can use it to edit audio of any kind and it's also a completely free open source tool another one the last one that i'm going to mention in this case is the one that i'm using to screen record my video right now and that is called obs studio with it it captures the screen and records it and then stores it on my hard drive other things you can use it for is you can stream let's say to youtube twitch facebook and any other place where it supports streaming that has been it for this video be on the lookout for the next video which will be 10 free apps for windows and again 10 free apps for ubuntu so until next time take care and stay safe